Okay, guys, here is your next fun sheet. It is construct a scientific explanation based on compiled evidence for the processes of photosynthesis, cellular respiration, and anaerobic respiration in the cycling of matter and flow of energy into and out of an organism. So we're going to talk about photosynthesis and cellular respiration and a little bit about anaerobic respiration, but how these processes go in and out of our ecosystems and our environments and how we're affected by them as organisms. All right, so first we got to define our terms like always. So a reaction. A reaction is a process in which elements react and rearrange to form new substances. A reactant or reactants is the starting materials. You should have be sort of familiar with that word now. We've talked about it a little bit. Reactants are the starting material. It's what you mix together to make something. If you're going to bake a cake, you take all your ingredients and you mix them together in the bowl. Those would be reactants. Then you're going to pour them in the pan, stick them in the oven, and your cake that you're going to eat is going to be your product. So that leads me to product. Oh, I forgot this. The reactants are on the left side of the equation, and I'll show you that more in a minute. Now we're going to move on to products. What is produced or the outcome? Think of math. Okay, if you have... Okay, products are on the right side. I went out of order first. So products are on the right side, reactants are on the left side. Now think of math. If you have the problem 2 times 4 equals 8, what is 8? Eight? 8's your product. So 8 is on the right side of the equation, on a traditional equation, and on the right side is your products. In this instance, if we're using this math example, 2 times 4 would be reactants, because that's what you're mixing together to get the product. Um, you should be writing down anything I write down. All right, now we're going to talk about the actual process of photosynthesis. It's a reaction that occurs in the plants. Um, what organelle does photosynthesis occur in, guys? You should know this. We've been talking about it since the beginning of time. Yes, a chloroplast. The chloroplast converts sunlight energy into food. Food in this instance, it has tons of names. And it's sort of confusing because it could be glucose, it could be sugar, it could even be called chemical energy. All of those things are the same answer. That the chloroplast converts sunlight energy into food. It converts sunlight energy into chloroplast, excuse me, into glucose. It converts sunlight energy into sugar. You could put any of those words there. It's interchangeable. Um, let's also talk about the word photosynthesis. Photo means light, and synthesis means to make. So we're talking about, you know, making light or using light. Also, I want you to draw a picture of a chloroplast, um, a little flashback into our cell organelle days. That's what it looks like, a green jelly bean with stacks of buttons all lined up on top of each other. All right, then we have cellular respiration. Cellular respiration is a reaction that occurs in the mitochondria, you should have known that, of a cell. It's a chemical equation, is broken down into usable pieces of energy called ATP. And ATP is just an abbreviation for adenosine triphosphate which is the fancy word for energy um, in this instance. So you're going to draw an example of a mitochondria, jelly bean with the squiggly lines, and if you've listened to all the videos all year long, you've heard me say this all year long, this looks like a squiggly M. A squiggly M is a mitochondria. All right, now we're going to talk about a different, well, an example of cellular respiration, okay? 
we're going to talk about aerobic respiration. And aerobic respiration is a type of cellular respiration which uses oxygen and glucose to produce ATB, water and carbon dioxide. Um, examples of aerobic exercise would be when you go for a long distance run. Every day during cross country when my team would run four to six miles, that's an aerobic exercise. They're running long distance and they're using oxygen and it's going through the process of cellular respiration. Oh, biking is also an example. Um, the flip side of that, sold up, I skipped something. I went too far, hang on. Okay, go back, go back, go back. Aerobic. Cellular respiration. All right, well, let's do transpiration, and then we'll do anaerobic. Apparently, I went out of order. So transpiration is a process by which plants release water vapor into the air through the stomata. So think about the plastic leaves in the bag we've been looking at. The water vapor was caught in the plastic bag, and then it con condensated in the bag and collected, turned back into liquid. So that's transpiration. Let's see if we can find anaerobic. If I lost it. Oh, I lost it. All right, so we'll come back to that at the end. So here on the bottom of your page, I just wrote the words carbon dioxide, water, glucose, and oxygen so that you could write their element name or their chemical element compound so you will get familiar with what's what. We've talked about these in class now that hopefully you should be familiar with them, but since this is your reference sheet, I wanted to throw them on there. You have CO2 for carbon dioxide, H2O for water. Oh, also, okay, so then glucose is C6H12O6. I think I scratch out photosynthesis, photosynthesis and cellular respiration here, and I will come back to those two here in a minute. So I wanted to show you that how many of you like chocolate? How do you spell chocolate? C H O C O L I T, right? But C H O right there starts with what your letters are for glucose. Glucose C six H twelve O six chocolate C H O. What is chocolate? Chocolate. Oopsie, that's not a good letter crazy. Chocolate is sugar. So if that helps you remember the order that those letters go in because that's important, C6H12O6, and helps you remember what it is, it's chocolate. Chocolate sugar. Sugar is glucose. Okay. The last one is oxygen, and that's just O2. Um, now we're going to go on and we're going to talk about the photosynthesis and cellular respiration part. So, on the back of your paper, I want you to write this equation at the top. So, you're going to write sunlight, water, and carbon dioxide. It equals, or it produces, actually. Sunlight, water, and carbon dioxide produces, or yields, would be the correct words there. But I did put the equal sign above it, because if I'm referring to math and you're talking about equations... The equal sign is your, would be what's going to come after is going to be the product. So then your products are going to be glucose and oxygen. In chemical form, sunlight plus 6H2O plus 6CO2 yields or produces C6H12O6 plus 6O2. So on looking at this, write down or circle, or underline, or bracket, what the which side the reactants are on. Yes, they're on the left side. Those three on the left are the reactants, which means that the, the two compounds on the right are your products. Okay, this equation is the photosynthesis equation. Now we're going to talk about the cellular respiration equation. We've got C6H12O6 plus 6O2 
produces your yields. 6H2O plus 6CO2 plus ATP, which is just energy. So again, label which side is the reactant. So what are these two compounds? Those are reactants because they are on the left side of the equation. So that means the things on the right, these three items, are going to be products. This is the cellular respiration um, equation. And I want you to look at this. And I'm going to see if I can get a highlighter out to show you in real faint. In these equations, on the reactant side of photosynthesis, you have 6H2O plus 6CO2. Okay? Well, on the product side of cellular respiration, you have 6H2O plus 6CO2. Those are the two same elements, okay? It just in photosynthesis, they were reactants. In cellular respiration, they're products. Let me see if I can get another real light one and change colors. So then the products of photosynthesis, C6H12O6 plus 6O2, and if I look down here, become the reactants of cellular respiration. C6H12O6 plus 6O2 are the reactants. So basically, these four compounds flip-flop depending on which equation you're talking about, if you're talking about photosynthesis or if you're talking about cellular respiration. So if you remember back to the Pogel, it's talking about which ones are being recycled. Those four compounds are being recycled. Water and carbon dioxide are what are being mixed together in photosynthesis. But in cellular respiration, it's what's being produced. Now, the energies are not being recycled or are not the same thing because in the top, you have sunlight energy in photosynthesis a little sun rays, okay? And in the bottom, we have ATP energy, which is totally not the same, okay? So you should have written both these equations. You should have labeled the reactants and the products on both. And where it says note, well, below it, because you'll have written your equation right there, where it says note, I want you to explain what I just explained with my highlights and my circles and my lines, okay? The yellow and the peach. I want you to explain what I just explained in your own words. Um, I need to add the slide about anaerobic. So hang on one second. Actually, before I add the part about anaerobic, on the back below where you just answered your note section, I want you to draw this picture. So you need to have a tree, you need to have the sun, you need to have some type of animal, okay? I drew a rabbit, we all know that I'm not a good cow drawler, so let's go with the rabbit. Um, the rabbit's going to exhale and expel carbon dioxide, which is going to go into the tree. And down in the root system of the tree, we have water, because it rained, and the water is going to go into the tree. So you have your H2O plus your CO2 plus your sunlight all going into the tree. And then coming out, you have your oxygen and you have your glucose. Those two things are being produced. I want you to draw this on your paper and, paper and label this part. And then I want you to tell me what process we just illustrated. All right, now I'm going to add the anaerobic slide. All right, I think I've got the edits in here for the part I skipped, so let's keep going. Anaerobic, let's look at the word first and dissect it. An means not or without, the same thing that A does. When we talked about abiotic, it means without life or not living. Same thing with an, anaerobic, not or without. So a type of respiration, what do you think goes in there? Without oxygen. An example of that would be sprints. 
When you're sprinting, you are using a quick burst of energy and running so fast that your cells can't use oxygen. Either you don't have enough of it or um, you're just, it's over before your body can use them. Lactic acid. You've all experienced this, I'm sure, if you've done physical activity. There's times, oh, I have a little typo in there. Take out that line. I don't know what I did. You can scribble through it. Forms when muscles can't get enough oxygen, and it causes your muscles to fatigue and a burning sensation in your muscles. So, you know, after you've had a really hard workout or you've gone for a really long run or you did lots of sprints and your calves are sore or maybe your legs, there that is because your body went through a type of anaerobic respiration and lactic acid formed because of that, because you couldn't get enough oxygen. And so this lactic acid forms in your muscles, and it's what makes your muscles sore. And then another example of anaerobic respiration would be fermentation. And fermentation is the breakdown of food without the use of oxygen. And it produces CO2. So an example of this is if you've ever made your own homemade dough, maybe for, for pizza, you're going to make the crust for the pizza, and you're doing it, and you're making the dough. If you have, you have to use yeast in it, and so as the yeast rises, it's fermenting. And because what's happening is really the CO2 is being produced, and the bubbles are forming, and that's what's making the dough rise. Because the carbon dioxide is bubbling up, and pushing the dough higher or further out, it's expanding. So yeast is an example when the dough rises of fermentation. Okay. Um, sorry, I lost that slide in here somehow, but this should cover us now, and we should have it all. All right, that's it.